Hey guys, so we've just wrapped up a live stream series where we put together this Fulgatech FTI-3 Mega 3D printer. And uh, for those of you that have been there on the live streams, you've seen this go every step of the way. But a lot of you guys probably have seen those videos and thought, ah, it's too long for me to watch, so I'll wait for a recap. So here it is. So what I'm gonna do is now that we've got a couple prints out of this printer already, and now that we get the build behind us, we're still doing some tweaking, but let me tell you what I have so far for likes and dislikes for the Fulgertech i3 Mega. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, well, welcome back. So we have the Fulgertech FTI3 Mega assembled and we've done some prints with it. Um, so yeah, let me give you some of my initial thoughts. But before I go there, let me say hello. Uh, welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool. This is my channel where all things nerdy is covered. 3D printing, cosplay, robots, you name it. If you're not already a subscriber, well, hit that button in the corner and become one. I don't want you to miss any of my videos. I think you'll really enjoy the fun we have over here. Uh, and my name is Paul. So hello, now that we get that out of the way. So here it is. Uh, let me get a few disclaimers out of the way. Uh, there's only one. This printer was sent to me for free, for review, uh, from John Folger himself, from Folger Tech Technologies. Uh, they are one state away from me in New Hampshire, so it arrived here fairly quickly. And uh, when I received it, uh, they had decided to make some changes to the design. They changed the uh, size of the, uh, uh, the Z-screw. They went to an eight millimeter one. So when I received it, not long after that, I also received some add-ons, uh, some changes to the kit. So my kit was, I guess, a beta kit, one of an early release. So as we did the build, we kind of ran into a few issues where we had definitely had to change some things out. Uh, I had to print uh, the new uh, X-axis idlers here uh, to accommodate uh, the new hardware that went in for the larger Z-screw. But besides that, everything else went together really, really smoothly. And uh, I'm gonna look at my laptop a couple times here off screen because I have a lot of notes. And I think you'll appreciate the uh, things I bring up here. Um, first of all, uh, the kit itself is, it looks just like a CR-10, it looks just like a TiVo Tornado, it looks just like an i3. It's basically that same design. It's uh, uh, 300 by 300 by 400 tall. And uh, it's basically a, uh, a low cost entry into that market. And uh, uh, from what I understand from others is that this has been a very popular purchase for schools and places that are looking to buy a 3D printer, uh, but it has to be from the United States. Uh, and it's something that you know average kids could put together. And I can tell you that the good is it is low cost at $349. And I also want to put a shout out out there that if you use discount code where nerdy is cool, that could save you 5%. So keep that on your mind if you're thinking about buying anything from Fulgertech. So that said, a uh, $349 kit, uh, it's using aluminum composite material, uh, which is basically a, it's thin pieces of aluminum with a plastic in between. Uh, we're not dealing with melamine anymore, which can get warpy. And I can tell you that I do like this material a lot. Um, it's a little bit on the sharp side, so if you have a deburring tool or something like that, not a bad idea. Uh, I did notice on a few spots in the construction, I kind of carved myself up. So, um, very easy to assemble, and uh, it's actually a lot of fun to put together. Uh, you may notice in the live streams, if you skim through any of those, we really had a good time putting this together. It, I mean, it's, it's basically all these screws and T-nuts and 3030 aluminum rail and it goes together very, very nicely. It's very rewarding to see how fast this comes together, actually. Uh, I really enjoyed this build. Um, Electronics-wise, you know, if you're worried about dealing with wires and stuff like that, don't. Uh, they don't require any soldering, and any places where the wiring has to be, you know, connected from one set to another, they make use of connectors, and uh, those connectors work just fine. I would suggest that, uh, like anything electrical, if you have a multimeter, it can check for continuity just to make sure your connectors and you know, your length of wires where they're adjoining uh, are working. That would be good to have. I'd also recommend furwell connectors for things that go into the uh, power board. Um, those are pretty inexpensive to get on Amazon or elsewhere. You just clamp those on uh, to the end of the, uh, to the wire and then you know, trim the end a little bit and uh, it will fit inside those uh, openings just, just perfect. Uh, another, another thing that deserves a big shout out, and I really want to emphasize this because I was really critical about it on my FT5 review, the instructions are amazing. Chris Soros has outdone himself. He has made the instructions for this thing very easy to follow. 
We're no longer dealing with you know uh, low resolution photographs and a PDF. We're dealing with CAD style drawings that have arrows and show where things belong. So the instructions are a real standout in this product. It, they, it's, it's, it's really, really great. They've done a really great job uh, doing that. So uh, tip of the hat to Chris, you've done a great job on the instructions. Uh, as I mentioned, you don't composite material. Um, you don't wind up with any black hands. Uh, if, if anything, you're just removing a bunch of film uh, from the 3030s and uh, the other uh, uh, protective coatings that come uh, on these ACM pieces. Uh, what else can I mention here? The wiring, as I mentioned, was super easy, but the one thing I would recommend is you may see these little orange bits all over my printer. You can find these on Thingiverse under 3030 clips. I'll put a link in the description below as to where to get them. These little clips do a great job of helping pushing the wires into the groove of the 3030 rail, and uh, you have a lot of wires to manage, so uh, this certainly helps out quite a bit. One thing that's interesting about this design is it's different from the TiVo Tornado and CR10s and you know, XYZ, you name the clone. Uh, the Z-Screws motors are up top and they're not on the bottom like those printers are. So basically you have the dual Z-Screws uh, hanging in the air and they're being supported only uh, by, of course, the Z-Coupler, uh, which is attached to the stepper motor. And for those of us that have had some I know in my CR10, for whatever reason, mine got real stretched out over time and I had to replace it. Uh, and you know that was set up on the bottom. So I'm curious how these are going to hold up over time hanging up there vertically like that up top. So, so far they're moving very well, but I'm really curious over time if they're going to show any stretch or, or anything like that. But so far, so good. So that covers the stuff I really, really like as far as the, as the printer goes, the construction, the wiring, the, I mean, it's a really good, if you're looking for a printer to hand off to a beginner who's never built a printer before, this certainly fits the bill. It does a really good job. Now, in fairness, let's cover the things that I'm not going to say they're bad because they can be approved upon, but let me just give you a list of the things that I kind of disliked, okay? Uh, the one thing that really stood out when I was going through the instructions uh, there is no power switch on this printer. You essentially cut the end off the power cord and you wire it directly to the power supply and <laughs> your, your method of powering on the printer is to unplug it and plug it back in. Or if you put it on a surge suppressor, you, of course, you could do it that way. And I, I was not a fan of that. So what I did is I reached out to John and I said, you know, I, I really want to have a switch. Um, maybe we can do something like what the FT5 uses. So he was kind enough to send me an FT5 switch. And what I did is I CNC'd out of aluminum a faceplate, mounted that in there, and then it was a matter of trying to find the best place to place that switch. Uh, so I initially wanted to put it in the back of the printer, but the power supply sits rather close to the rear and I didn't want to you know, try to mess with that location because there was a lot going on there already. So. Uh, it was decided to uh, mount the uh, plug and power switch on the uh, side of the, uh, of the printer on the same side where the, uh, all the other wiring is. And so far that's worked out pretty well. The other thing that this printer does not have and the FT5 doesn't have, I, I don't know why Fogotech does this, uh, they don't include a part cooling fan for your 3D printer. And to me that's one of the most important pieces you need in a 3D printer. So this one as well does not have one. And there are some designs on Thingiverse where you can place them on there, but you know, as we know, our parts need to be cooled in order for overhangs to work. And the fact that FolderTech does not include this with the printer, it, it's, it's disappointing because you really need that to get good quality prints. Now, I know people have said, well, you can put a fan on the desk and have that blowing on the printer, you know, that, but that's not the point. If, even the Chinese printers at the same price point include a part cooling fan. So I really, really wish, and again, this is my wish, uh, that if they redo this version or redo this model or their next printers, please include the part cooling fan. This way you don't have your customers searching high and low trying to find out how to complete this and, and have one. So that's, again, one of my pet peeves. So once you get everything powered up and you want to start testing things like moving the axes and, and, and things like this, uh, the firmware won't let you do that. The firmware that uh, is provided uh, requires you to home each access before you can move it, uh, for example, as they show, and rub to your host and stuff like that. In the LCD menu, you can't do anything in there. You can't move the Z-axis. And for me, one of the things I always do after a printer build is I like to at least 
go in there and try moving them back and forth just to make sure the stepper motors are working properly. You can't do that. You have to home them first. So that's when you hope that your limit switches work properly. So that, that was a little bit of annoyance. Uh, the other thing is I know that when I change filament, one of the first things I do is I raise the axis and you know I want to make sure that if I'm feeding a new filament, I can see it oozing out. Um, I don't usually have a computer via USB connected to the uh, printer to do that. So that can be changed by updating the firmware. Uh, I know a friend of mine has mentioned he's going to make a Marlin 1.1.9 uh, uh, build for this printer. So I'm hoping that shows up. And uh, if he does provide me with that info, I'll, I'll provide links to it. But uh, the version of Marlin that's on here doesn't allow you to move the individual axis. Uh, I think the only one that can be moved, if I recall, was X. But again, the big one I wanted was Z so I can move things up and down and make sure that the Z screws were working properly. So while we're talking about moving things around, one of the things that was, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, everyone struggles with bed leveling. And this bed has eight bed leveling screws. And the springs that are provided are pretty dinky little screws to begin with. And then the fact that you have eight points to get at, you know, it's not so big a deal to the front, uh, you know, the, the, in the middle and the sides. Okay, I can understand why they're there, but accessing them under the frame and then, you know, in the rear, especially near the power supply or near the, you know, the belt, it's, it's not the best. So this is definitely a strong candidate where if you're a fan of auto bed leveling, be it BL Touch or Easy ABL or name your probe, um, if I can find a way to do it on this printer, I'm definitely going to do it because leveling those with those eight little screws hasn't been a whole lot of fun. So that, again, that's I'm being picky, but it's not a whole lot of fun. Print quality, so far I've been really impressed. The uh, the first print came out for Puppeteer Host wasn't bad. I, I used a sample model that they suggested and it came out pretty good. I'm not a big user of Repetier Host. I like Simplify 3D, I like Hira. So fortunately, uh, I opened up the host file that they provided. Uh, I used Notepad to pull out the, the relevant information and I basically created a profile in a Simplify 3D just using some of the most basic settings. And even with those really rough settings, the first print came out really good. Uh, there's a few spots where, in, you know, for example, in the XYZ cube, you can see where not having a power cooling fan had some trouble with overhangs. But overall, for our first print, and just using a, a real guess here for some of these settings, it came out great. So I think with some more fine tuning, some better calibration, and if I can get a power cooling fan on this thing, I think this printer is going to do a really good job. Okay, so those are my early thoughts on this. Like I said, so far, I really like this printer kit. Like I said, this is just my, you know, early, this is not a full review. I've named off a lot of things I liked. I named off a lot of things I didn't like. But overall, I really like it. This was a lot of fun to put together, and uh, it's got great potential. There's a lot of things I want to change and tweak on this thing, but for right now, we're just going to take it one step at a time. So I'd be curious what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know. Is it, is it, is it a good value? Is it not? What do you think about the things that I nitpicked and the things that I praised? I'd be curious to hear it. So thanks for watching. As you guys know, you can find me on social media. On Facebook, you can find me as Where Nerdy Is Cool. On Instagram, Where Nerdy Is Cool. And of course, I have my own website, Where Nerdy Is Cool .com. I thank you guys for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, please become one and give us a thumbs up. And until next time, remember, this is Where Nerdy Is Cool.